Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. Coming up tonight, some family islanders say they've been left in the dark about that. A lot of people are clueless. But Ministry of Finance officials say they're making their rounds throughout the archipelago. BTC says recent major upgrades will do away with slow data and dropped calls. You're going to be able to have a much more improved experience. A behind-the-scenes look at the new Agriculture Institute in Andros, plus downtown undergoing renovations. People are not going to be sitting on vacant properties much longer. We've got those stories and much more for you tonight. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NV12 Weekend. everyone, thanks for joining us here at Cable 12 Studios. Topping news this Sunday evening as the country draws closer to the implementation of value-added tax, concern among the public has grown. However, that concern is not limited to New Providence. Those living in the family islands say they also have questions about the tax and some feel as though not enough has been done to educate them. Dana Smith has the story in this report. Family Island residents will be hit hardest by that implementation, according to Butler Turner. She said her constituents are afraid, not only because of their stagnant economy, but also because of the potential ramifications that could have on such Family Island communities. Down in Maguana, local resident Iris Charlton said residents there are not prepared for VAT, and a level of fear exists over the future tax. One of the things that um, I have gotten from speaking with persons in the public is that they're really um, afraid of VAT because in Miguana the cost of living is really, really high. Charlton pointed to things such as exorbitant freight charges and limited airlift. She said things are already tough in Miguana and increased taxes might make things worse. We don't really support VAT. We don't see how that's going to work for us because we're struggling already. Another resident, Hugh Williamson, echoed those concerns and said there have been no educational campaigns on VAT as yet. We are made to believe that at some time, some point in time, the appropriate persons from the ministry will come up and at least explain what all of the, the involvement with VAT. When asked if he felt residents there have been adequately informed about VAT implementation, Williamson said firmly, no. Charlton agreed. A lot of people are clueless. Over in Andros, one woman expressed concern for her family-run construction company when VAT comes into effect. Johnny Mae Colbrook pointed to the island's unemployment rate. When she was asked how she felt about VAT implementation, she explained many residents are preoccupied with finding jobs. What happened, I feel very bad because I is a business lady, me and my husband, George Colbrook. Right now, we have a lot of bills and stuff like that and ain't no job. And we're praying for something to move in Andres where everybody could work. Because you know ain't no job in Andres. Speaking on behalf of her Long Island constituents, deputy leader of the Free National Movement, Loretta Butler-Turner said family islands will be hit hardest by VAT. She said her people are afraid of the potential ramifications VAT could have on family island communities. Everything they rely on comes from Nassau. So you're talking about another set of VAT for services um, just to get survival items such as food cooking gas, um, petroleum, uh, everything that needs to come into to the islands from New Providence uh, is going to, 
I think, hit them the hardest. She pointed to freight costs as an example. Long Island imports many goods from the capital, and if prices go up in New Providence, Butler Turner said costs will be higher in Long Island and even higher in farther family islands. Everything is going to be considerably higher for those that have to live on family islands, and they're the ones that have the least economic activity. The government is still on track for a July 1st implementation date, though the Prime Minister said recently he can still be persuaded if anyone in the private sector can offer a viable alternative. For NB12 Weekend, I'm Dana Smith. Well, State Minister for Finance Michael Halkita says the Ministry of Finance has beefed up efforts in its ongoing educational campaign on value-added tax. He told NB12 that the VAT implementation team will cover all of the family islands before July 1st. Halkita said the team has already been to Grand Bahama, Abaco and Andros. Now, there has been public outcry for government to push back its July 1st implementation date. Residents say they need more information on the tax and how it would affect them. Some people want more information, we're striving to provide that. Some people have a philosophical difference where they, they don't agree. Some people believe that we should have progressive income tax where those who make more should pay more. And some people believe that we should have a, a consumption tax. What we are trying to do here at the Ministry of Finance is provide as much information as possible so people can understand what's being proposed. The implementation team has also taken to social media in its latest effort to reach out to the public in the consultation and communications process. Avad Bahamas' Facebook page was launched earlier this month and will be updated every Monday through Friday with new facts on VAT added daily. Financial Secretary John Roll said this is just another way to reach out to members of the public who may not use television and radio as their main sources of information. Ministry officials noted that many members of the public do not attend the interactive presentations hosted by the ministry. Roll said he's hoping the Facebook page will help to educate those who are still in need of more information. You can access the Facebook page using any computer, laptop, tablet or mobile device. Just type in VATBA242. That's V-A-T-B-A-H-242. Well, in crime news, a 20-year-old man is fighting for his life in hospital after he was riddled with bullets in the Fox Hill area last night. After receiving reports of a shooting incident around 6.30 p.m., police discovered the man suffering from gunshot wounds on Dorset Street. The victim was taken to hospital via EMS personnel, where at last report, he was in critical condition. In other news, thousands of cell phone users can say goodbye to dropped calls and painfully slow data. At least that's what officials at BTC are saying now that the company has spent nearly $20 million so far upgrading its mobile network. Around 5 to 6 million of that went toward the implementation of the new 4G LTE network, which was officially launched on Thursday. Now, according to officials, the Bahamas now has the biggest LTE network in the region. We spoke to them about what that means for the country and for customers. Right now, it only covers New Providence, Grand Bahama, Eleuthera, and Abaco. But of course, BTC is continuing to expand, and so we're going to move into other islands later down into the year and continue to move into other islands into 2015 as well. The company anticipates getting 4,000 to 5,000 customers moving to LTE over the next four to five months. According to BTC Wireless Manager Alphanique Duncan, upgrading to LTE was a very complex process, but one that will address the persistent data service issues caused by the increasing demand. $18 million will go toward adding new cell towers to expand capacity and build out the first phase of the upgrade. Three new cell towers have already been built on New Providence. They've been installed on the Sir Milo Butler Highway at Pinewood Gardens North and Carmichael Road. Three more will be built on the island over the next few weeks. LT brings improved data services to our customers because now you're getting speeds five times faster than what you would have gotten on 4G. Um, so what that means for customers is that you're going to get faster browsing. Um, you're going to be able to have a much more improved experience you know, when you're using the internet on your phone. The LTE soft launch began on January 23rd. Duncan said over the last nine weeks, there have been a number of network improvements in support of current activity and in preparation for LTE. The company recently reported a significant reduction in reports of dropped calls. But here's the catch. 
Even though the service is launched, cellular customers don't automatically get LTE. You'll have to purchase a 4G LTE-compatible mobile phone or device. Duncombe explains that it will also require an upgrade to your service package. Now, customers don't just need the device, they also need an LTE SIM, and that upgrade is free of charge to all of our prepaid and postpaid customers, and then they also need an LTE data plan. BTC's Senior Vice President of Brands and Communication, Marlon Johnson, said the upgrades are more about customer satisfaction than increasing revenue for the company, adding that it is said to impact the company's bottom line only very incrementally. Meantime, the public will have to wait even longer to find out just what was in the initial BTC deal. Bamboo Town MP Renwood Well said it is unclear when the government will move to establish a select committee in the House of Assembly to investigate the 2011 sale of the majority stake in the Bahamas Telecommunications Company. It was Wells who stood up in the House on February 5th and gave notice to move for the committee's formation at the next sitting. However, after the Prime Minister Perry Christie delivered his mid-year budget communication on Wednesday, the House was suspended until February 19th. The BTC matter was not discussed. Wells said he will speak with Christie and Dr. Bernard Nottage, leader of government business in the House, to see when the matter will be addressed, but assured our news team that it's still on the agenda. Businessman Franklin Wilson, who headed the negotiating team, told the Nassau Guardian last week that the government netted less than $100 million for selling 51% of BTC to cable and wireless communications back in 2011. The sale price was $210 million. Wilson did not provide details to support his statements, but insisted the, quote, horrendous deal should be investigated. He said a select committee would be cheaper than a commission of inquiry. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram said previously he would welcome any probe into the deal.